Hi, Pat Love back with Pat's Two Cents. Uh, this is a uh, piggyback on what the heck is going on when God is silent. How, you know, what do we do with that? Okay, listen. Have you ever taken an IQ test? And you're trying to figure things out. Now, once they put the timer on, the teacher can't say a word. You can't say a word. You are to take this test. Well, there are things in IQ tests where you really have to finesse your thinking abilities, think outside the box, in some cases think as if there is no box, and reason this thing out until you deduce and arrive at the correct answer. You have to formulate a system to get to the answer at times. You have to be creative to come up with the answer. So you've got to get your creative juices going. Yeah. That comes in silence. And the teacher must remain silent while you are taking the test. Because you have been prepped and equipped to handle this task. So now we get to see, and you get to see, above all, how far you've come. So there are times when God's silence is a form of a, um, a gauge, a progress gauge, so you can see for yourself the level at which you have grown. All right. Now, there are times when you're trying to figure something out. You're trying to come, come up with an answer. And you can't get it. So your tendency, if you're in a class and you're taking a quiz, is to raise your hands and ask the teacher to explain and help you figure this thing out. Well, the teacher can't feed you the answer. So sometimes what the teacher will do, I had this happen to me when I was taking beginner algebra. I loved math. I loved figuring out the equations. But when it came to one part of algebra, for some reason, it did not compute. It would not compute. It could not compute. <laughs> And I got so frustrated, I started crying. I wanted to learn it so bad. Yeah, yeah, I know. Anyway, so I raised my hand, and, and a few other students raised their hand. And our teacher decided, okay, well, since you're having a hard time, his name was Mr. Yanofsky, excellent math teacher. He said, since you guys are having a hard time with this part, if you really want to learn this, I will give up an hour of my time this night, I mean, this day, this day, and this day after class. Meet me here in class, and we will, I will help you with your homework, answer all the questions you want. Cool. Take the quiz. I won't even use it as a grade. That will just let me know where you need the most help. Good. Okay, so what happens after class, this day, this day, and this day, I'm there with bells on my toes. I'm not walking and playing with my buddies in the schoolyard, trying to get home early to watch a cartoon. I'm there in class because I want to learn this thing. I want to understand it, and I don't. And when he got through working, all of a sudden, just being there. Don't ask me how it happened. Sometimes just going back and going back and going back, something clicks. And all of a sudden, the answer's there. You don't know how you came to it, but all of a sudden, you understand it. And for the rest of the year, A's, A minus, A, A minus. I aced that class. Something just clicked. Sometimes I believe God doesn't give you the answer because he's already equipped you with what it takes and the, the gift he wants you to exercise. And, ah, 
in order to draw your answers from obscurity. That's part of his developing you. So it's on you to have to dig, scratch, claw in order to get your answers, in order to get understanding. And you may not be able to work out the understanding, but because God is so faithful, he'll flick that switch sometimes just based on your efforts. And all of a sudden, boom, it's crystal clear. Well, now, how did that happen? But it happened because you kept going back, kept going back kept going back like Jacob I will not let go of you until you bless me battling with the angel of the Lord huh prevail with God through your perseverance and you will get much you will get many more answers as a result because part of the journey is the push you can't give birth to a baby sitting back sipping coffee. You got to bear down and push that bad boy. It's all on you at that point. That's part of the progress. That's part of giving birth. That's part of something coming from you that would never have come had you not pushed in your life again and again at every obstacle at every at every hindrance every every moment of your life when you're faced with opposition god is doing everything he can to drive the fear out of you and pull the perseverance from everything he's already given you you have the inner resources. Push those buttons. Put on the gas and push, baby. Give it all you got. And when you don't have any more got to get, that's when God kicks in and says, I'll take over from here. But you can't fake it with him. He knows when there's no more. He knows when you've given it all you have. Then he says, yeah, that's my bar. Here you go. Got it now? Oh, I got it! He's a very present help. But he's not welfare. He's not going to... He's not what you call an enabler in the form that we look at it. In the human form. Enablers giving you stuff, helping you when you ought to be helping yourself. Feeding you when you know you're an adult, you know how to pick up a fork and put it to your mouth yourself. You won't go get a job because you don't want to catch a bus. You better get your little lazy, happy hips up, walk out that door and go and march your butt to the bus stop. Some things are not to be handed to you because of what God wants you to accomplish in your life. You have to work that thing. God bless you as you enjoy the silence of the Lord.